There are several things about the nightcap on Minjimbal development that have actually stood out. Uh, things that are missing, not included, that you would expect to be included, especially in a large-scale development that is all about self-sustainability. Now, at the very core of self-sustainability is food, water, and shelter. Now, NICAP on Minjimbal, they've dealt with the water issue. Even though they <laughs> say they're going to drill all these bores down through the mountains, down to the Artesian Basin, that is an exorbitant cost on top of the cost of the infrastructure of $28 million worth of roads that they've got to put in before they could even put in a house. But they've actually got it figured out how they don't need council approval. And I will get into that in another video with Richard Moat. And I will, yeah, as I said, I will discuss that there. I don't want to get into that here. I want to highlight the absence and the clear distinction between uh, Bulla Bulla. When Mark Darwin was involved, he actually appreciated, I suppose, because Steph started, you know, helping him get all that established and realizing that the, the key importance was food, food, water, and shelter. Now, with the absence of the predominance of Mark Darwin in marketing, which is, I'm saying it that way because I can't say he's out of Nightcap or Minjimbal. He's still very heavily invested in the companies. So he's not out of Nightcap or Minjimbal. He's clearly still involved with it at a profit level at the very minimum. Now, anyone that has actually looked into food sustainability will know that you need a vast amount of land and cropping to be able to support your community. And you will generally, as farmers have traditionally done, you will grow a crop in excess so that you can actually trade that excess off with another farmer who is growing a crop that you don't, but you would like some of that. Where is the planned ability to be self-sufficient with food? It's all about sovereignty, owning the land. And I tell you what I do find really offensive is when you've got two boys that have been born into the Caucasian culture turning round and projecting what was, well, what they claim is done to Aboriginals as being done to them, to their ancestors. Look, I don't care whether someone's adopted into the tribe or not. Even Mark McMurtry said it. You have to have a blood tie to the land. Now, Mark McMurtry, after he said he had a blood tie to the land, what blood tie does he actually have to be Walpree? That's another story we're actually going to get into and I'm getting off track here because the whole purpose of this is to highlight a very big absence of self-sustainability. Where is the food? They have made the comment that, oh, you know, if we go into lockdowns again, we've we're self-sufficient, you know, we're apart from the matrix, we're tribal, you know, we've got it all worked out and everything. So if it goes into lockdown again, you know, we'll be right. Well, will you? Tell me, where is all your food? How are you going to not be reliant on the matrix? Or as Max Egan calls them, how are you not going to be a truckarian? Now, the other question I would ask is that those that are claiming to teach us how to get connected back to country and, you know, how to recognise plants and all these other things and be connected to them because, you know, nobody else could figure it out or possibly know, what are your qualifications? 
How many gardens have you grown? You know, just a simple thing like what is your base knowledge? All these things that are supposed to be shared, all this knowledge passed down that you are going to share with people. Why isn't the predominance on survival? Because that's what you would have shared, survival. Food, water and shelter. Very vital. Aboriginals never owned anything. They never owned estates. And yet, Mark McMurtry talks about having sovereignty uh, uh, over their own estates. And it's like, uh, what estates? This is a white man's term. There is, I guarantee you, there's not even a word in Aboriginal, in all the different Aboriginal languages for a state either. Or ownership. You know, so where are these ones that are going to teach us how to come back on country, where is their knowledge? Where is their skill with the country itself, with the plants, with the trees? Oh, they can walk around and go, oh, look, here's a tree, here's a plant. Where is any of this? Conspicuous absence of any food sustainability or even planned food sustainability in the nightcap on Minjimbal development. At least when Mark Darwin was promoting it, he knew that food was an essential part and he always tried to bring in the, um, you know, we're going to have a great big organic uh, community farm, uh, not community farm, um, what is it? Community garden. And when he said that, it's like, mate, you can't have a community garden. What you're going to need is community acres of paddocks. They are planning on having 424 lots, which means, well, let's say on average two and a half people per lot. That's a thousand people. So that's a thousand people for 365 days of the year how are you even going to feed them for one day? So the illusion of self-sustainability and that NICAP on Minjimbal have it all sorted out and that it's a good place to go because if borders, you know, shut down again and trucks stop delivering, it's, it's, they've got it all worked out, you know. You're right there because, you know, they're apart from the matrix. Well, no, you're not right there because if the trucks stop delivering to the shops and you can't go to the shops to buy your food, well, where's your food production? Hmm? You've had years to actually put in some level of food production, fruit trees or even anything like that. But no, unless some group will volunteer to come in and do it for you because you don't want to do the work. You know, that's for other people. I mean, it's, you know, I have to look at those promoting it and actually ask, how many of you have actually done any gardening at all? Would you even know how to identify one plant from another? I mean, I could learn a lot from Aboriginal knowledge about the plants. But they could also learn a lot from me. So the question still remains. How many of the nightcap developers have made plans for food? The very foundation of survival. If you can point out other than asking you what your food preferences are so they can gauge what kind of a radicalised mindset you have. And for any vegans that are out there, I'm sorry if you're going to take offence to this, but your food choices are a radicalised concept. You do not need to kill the cow to get milk. You do not need to kill the chicken to get eggs. You do not need to kill the sheep to get wool but you do need to kill plants to eat them and if you have seen plants the way I have seen plants 
you would have just as much respect for plant life as what you do animal life. You would not say, oh, the plants are, you know, edible because they're not cute, fluffy and cuddly. They don't connect with me in the same way as what animals do. And so thereby I can justify killing a plant and eating it, but I can't do it to an animal. So if you're a vegetarian, you're, there's a fairly good chance that you've actually got a balanced mentality, even though you do not prefer to kill and eat things. You are still killing things to eat them even when they are plants. Yes, I know that a lot of these things like fruits and nuts, you do not have to kill the, the plants to actually get those things. Some things are going to die anyway, so if you don't eat them, they're going to go to waste. Well, they won't go to waste. Everything will go back into the soil and nourish the next generation. Now, the reason I'm bringing this radicalised food concept up is because it is on the Nightcap on Mingeable questionnaire. They want to know what you eat in your own home. It is very important to gauge your mindset by what you eat. And I dare say there's a lot of other people out there that know that, like, say for example, if I said to you that Adrian Brennock is a flat earther, which he is, Mark McMurtry is not a flat earther and thinks that Adrian Brennock is a nut for believing in it. Well, <laughs> what kind of a mentality of a man that wants to go back hundreds of years worth of scientific advancement and go, the earth is flat? I mean, <laughs> I look up at the uh, moon, I look up at the sun, and I don't see flat. I see round. It's a globe. They're all globes. And I don't know how they figure out the rest of the universe. This is why I will never, ever speak to a flat earther again. Their mentality is so out there, they cannot understand basic concepts. And yet, the main, one of the main promoters and developer of Nightcap on Mingeable, Adrian Brannock, is a flat earther. He believes that we have been lied to, that we do not live on a spinning globe. All the science that we've come to understand is all just fabricated lies. So then you have to actually wonder the mindset of the developer who has such radicalised concepts, wants to make money. And the, the clear purpose of Nightcap on Mingeable is not to create a community that is self-sustainable. It's to sell off as many lots and make as much money and profit as possible and to be able to receive income tax-free. Now, on my uh, previous upload where I joined both Adrian Brennock's Voxes together, I intend to do a couple of other mixes where he talks about one thing, about all this, you know, love and light, do no harm, or come back to heart and, you know, all these good things, and then just slip it into the real AB then go back to his more bullshit and then into some more real AB and let's see if people can actually pick up on the fact that NICAP on Mingeable is just one great big sales pitch there is the foundations that they've created for NICAP on Mingeable is to create profit not sustainability not a community that gets on with each other. That's not the aim. The aim is that the people that are financially invested in it, the top tier, they are the ones that want to make money out of the other ones buying in that can never build on their land. But they've found a way around that, haven't they? As I said, that's another video. I'm going to shine a light on that separately. Where is your food? Huh? Come on, Nightcap. 
I'm willing to um, say I'm wrong. If you can point out anything where you've actually stated in public promotions that you have got any plans to put in a garden, a community garden, orchards, paddocks, how you will organise to trade with other communities and organise that, look, you grow this particular crop, we'll grow this one so that we can swap excess and we can have a variety in our diet. So before I finish up on this, I just want to say thank you to Andrew Barnett who has <laughs> gone round and left comments on many of the posts on Nightcap on Minjimble, both spellings. I haven't looked at Nightcap Realty. I dare say you can't do it in the Nightcap private group. Uh, with the Voxes, the short clip of Adrian Brennock with his two Voxes. He's actually stuck in the comments for a lot of the posts. So anyone going to these website or Facebook sites now reading down the page will actually see. <laughs> yeah, listen to the real AB. And on that note, I'm going to finish this up. Food choices, food preferences, and seriously, where is the food at Nightcap on Minjimbal? You see them going around in a few film clips, picking those wild um, berries that, oh yeah, aren't they sour? Most of the time they're just absolutely disgusting. And unless you cultivate them in a large mass so that they're very well pollinated and bear an abundance of fruit, um, yeah, it might you might have people be able to go down there and pick at the bushes for a few days, but who's going to be able to do anything with it? Can you make jams? or put them into stews, dry them out, um, you know, turn them into dried fruit, whatever. Can you do any of that? No, because there's no excess. There's not even enough to feed who's already there. And if you look at what may already be there in natural bush, that the elders, or so-called elders of Minjimbul say, well, you know, these are food trees. How many of, how are you going to support a community with what you've got. You don't even have the plans to put in food. Or are you just not sharing that key vital sustenance for self-sustainability? Is that just not on the list of important things? Food? Don't know. Maybe the Nightcap or Minjimble boys can answer that question. There's Certainly none of their promotions can. And on that note, I'll catch you next time.